Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome to the family room. Another wonderful Wednesday. This one is brought to you in part by Kelsey Cochran Industries. Uh, Come on. Born this day, April 24th, 19 something. Brought to you by the letter H and B. You're not supposed happy to. Happy birthday. Exactly. You're not supposed to tell a woman's age. So happy, happy birthday, Kelsey. 27th birthday. Y'all put that in the chat. <laughs> put it in the chat. Happy, 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 happy birthday, happy, happy. Kelsey. Uh, I'm excited. Bring her a um, cupcake Sunday. Yeah, bring her, bring me some cupcakes because she won't eat them. <laughs> but uh, I will do it. Um, it's what? a great Wednesday. Aren't, what about the weather we've been having? We don't ever talk about the weather. Uh, it's it, the weather seems nice. The I've weather is felt perfect. like poop, so uh, I can't enjoy the weather. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, yes, uh, to get out in front of the curve, let us know where you're watching from um, today. This one is recorded again because it is my wife's birthday. And as much as I enjoy spending time with you, I very much more enjoy spending time with her. Are you talking to them or me? Uh, yes. Shame. Both. <laughs> uh, the events coming up, um, I know this coming Tuesday is the last yes. of the men's fan, fam group for the men that we need which will be led by you this week. It's going to be a good one. going to be a great one. Uh, And women's is also going on. That's Tuesdays at 6.30. Uh, Yes, sir. Of course, this is the last one for the men. Is the women's one still going on? This is their last one. This is their last one, too. Okay, well, We're wrapping up all of those small groups. For now. We've got a couple of announcements to talk about what's coming up for the next season. Yes. Um, And then uh, Dining with Dignity is on the 2nd, May 2nd, from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Don't miss that. The next Women's Fellowship Night, that's not the Tuesday morning uh, Women's Bible Study, that is the Women's Fellowship Night, May 9th, from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. And it looks like coming up is the Youth Movie Night. That's only for the youth. Um, So if you are a youth, uh, invite your friends. We're going to have another movie night. The Beast Feast, thank you, is on June 22nd. Do you want to give some insight into the Beast I Feast? I didn't know we were breaking that dog out yet. I just got the 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 go-ahead. Come on, hot off the press. <laughs> Men, get ready for a time of fellowship. We're going to start doing it once every couple of months, something new with the men of the church. We've got so many, and I think it has to do with zaddy time. We've got a lot of young couples, young men coming into the church. So what we're trying to do is every couple of months or so, we're going to do something really spectacular. We're going to make excited. an event. This one is going to be the first one. It's going to be the Beast Feast. The Beast Feast. We're going to have a good time. We'll tell you more about it as we're going on. We're trying to arrange some special things that are going to happen on that night. It is going to be one of those don't miss it kind of nights. I'm excited. I like food. Food. So. Any kind of food is good. Especially barbecue. You get barbecue and men, and uh, the guys they will show up. The best whatever it is. <laughs> you can cook kangaroo, parsley. Possum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't we'll make me tell laugh. more I still, about it as it gets close enough. Like Mark your calendar. Smoker. What's the date? Uh, June 22nd. June 22nd. Mark June your calendar. 22nd. The, week, the, the week after Father's Day. Yes. Which we were going to do it that weekend, day. but we figured everybody, you've got your own plans going on. I'm as, sure your wives are going to pamper you. They're going to take care of as you. As Mimi said, uh, sometimes families do things on holidays. Other families. Uh, Not ours. You know, it's funny um, that, have you ever noticed that Mother's Day is yes. within the school year? So all the kids at school get to make these nice projects and crafts for their mother. Can we start a petition? And um, men are just thrown across into the wilderness in the middle of summer. Six weeks later. And we get nothing but mosquitoes and, and suntan and sunburn. Lyme disease. It's terrible. Yeah. it's So, you know, it's a great thing to be a mother. I wouldn't know, but... I imagine getting crafts from your children is a is a fun event. <sighs> At least we'll get music, a beast feast. Play in the background. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Again, um, I don't know why we're saying that this early. But, uh, yeah, good thing this is pre-recorded. I can't imagine. Let us know in the comments, again, where you're watching from. Where you're from. watching from and what you're eating. We always like to know either way. We'll be home. I'll be home. He's going to be at a ball game. I'm going to be, be at a. I'm going to be screaming at children, texting to my own self during this conversation. So, 
I, when I'm go. ready to say something, I'll say, listen to this. I knew I was about to say that there. <laughs> uh, this, sun, or this I'm sorry, this one tonight, we are talking about the 39th anniversary, yes. which, fun fact, uh, was Sunday, April 21st, which was actually the day that y'all started the church. Um, a lot of commentary on that. I, I really ought to put it all down in a in kind of a synopsis how it all happened we have the quick little thing on the uh website yes. with the story but it would be cool it, to do that. some type of very something cool with it. i had a lot of people afterwards say that they really were thankful to be able to hear where we started from and how it all happened that kind of thing but that was the day april the 21st 1985 was the very first sunday seven people sat in the room over at 76 south whitney street is that including y'all or was that like no that was us well that's seven what I'm saying. of like, us mom dad mike shauna how kathy me <laughs> uh, and we just we I, I we laugh about it now. I had no plan, no thought, no mission, no nothing. It's like we're gonna do it. I just feel like God wants us to do this, and they were all like, "Okay, we'll do this." Sure, we'll 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 be there. No one was more surprised than my dad when I told dad and mom. Dad, with his stoic self, he said, "Well, son, we'll be praying for you." That had to be. <laughs> The most awkward uh, offering plate passing around. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to write the first check? Right. <laughs> it would have been my mom, I promise you. Oh, yeah. She would have been the first one. So Sunday, you preached on being bothered. Being bothered. Matthew 9. That was a great thought that sprang forward from a couple of occurrences. Um, one of them was me, as I said in the story. I was watching Netflix, and I found this documentary on people and in, disappear into the internet world, and one of the last statements that they made was that they don't like to be bothered. And that's one of those kind of things, here's a little back door to preaching, that sometimes a phrase like that will catch your attention. You'll, 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 you know, oh, yeah. It'll catch your attention, write it down, because it's like the Holy Spirit is speaking something through that. So I, I had that written down from a few months ago. Kelsey had put a post on about seeing a gentleman in a dumpster looking for food and it was about being bothered, you know, and caring enough to be bothered. And I thought that's such a great word and that's such a great story. I used it as the foundation for this, this sermon. From Matthew chapter 9, uh, 35 through 38, that moment where Jesus saw the multitudes and he was moved with compassion for them, uh, he was bothered by their condition and what he saw in their lives. So we built the whole thing on, on that. And I gave a synopsis of the the church, if you haven't seen it, go take a look at it. Uh, 39 years is uh, quite a long time. Yeah, it's longer than I've been alive. Right? You weren't even there yet. Um, Brandon came along in 1987. You came along in 1990. But we, um, we just launched out there with a not even a dream. I mean, I would love to say I had a dream <laughs> or this great vision that God was going to use us to reach nations. No, I just... Really felt like God wanted us. I thought we'd be a, a little small local church all of my life because that's all I ever knew. The church I yeah. grew up in was teeny tiny, so I thought that's church. And then you get going. And the now things. is it is it that one or this one that you had the the chickens running under the floorboard? The church I grew up in. Okay. Yeah. I always get that mixed up. That it when you had started here, Trinity Chapel on Thirty Four Leonardi Street. Now it's Restoration Time Deliverance Center. Still there, still the building. They've remodeled it and made it nicer, but no air conditioning, no heater. Um, <laughs> cracks in the floor that you could literally listen for chickens and then look down and see the chickens pecking underneath. The, it was quite a, quite a church. That's fun. Never That's got above awesome. 35, 40 people that I recall. And so that was my model. That was my model of what church was supposed to be about. And then you get into it and the thing starts growing and then you buy land and build another building and then you buy land and build another building. And here we are 39 years later buying, buying land, land. <laughs> to build another building. By the way, getting a family room update on that, I can't tell you everything, but I can tell you something. We got some good news this week. Back to the back to the. <laughs> oh, hey, back you to the try to cut me off before I <laughs> jump into some, it. If you want good news, put it in the chat. We got good news this week, so we'll be bringing that all, bringing it all up. I'm speak. excited. I love good news. Yeah, it's a lot better than bad news. But the entire sermon was built on the reality of, of where we are in this church. And for those of you that don't know, we're kind of in this synchronicity of transition at the time. Sunday, congratulations, by the way, you were ordained into the assistant, uh, the associate pastor's position. How's that feel? Uh, exactly the same. <laughs> Sunday night, <laughs> I'm not one I, for I titles or anything said, How's that like new that, title so. feel? He said exactly the yeah, same. Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know. We're not about titles. We've made the joke. I'm, I'm like a robot. It, it's, 
Don't go for the title. It, go for they, the towel. When I had to sign the sign the thing at the wedding, and I, I had to ask you what title to put because I'm just speaking of that. A lot weird. of history was made this weekend. Yeah, you were ordained into an associate pastor's role, and then two days later, you conducted your first wedding. It's nice, nice to get the get the one out of the way. Just <laughs> be go. ready for the rest. When's your first funeral? Uh, I don't think I want to do any of those. It's pretty. It'll be a while. <laughs> those are not as I'm fun not the and guy beautiful as a wedding that. is. But we're in that um, that season of transition here. Um, Kathy and I, just for everybody to know, we're 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 going into that that ending phase. But we're going to be here. Uh, we we were at one time going to be moving to somewhere else. But since it's you and Kelsey that are taking over and moving in, we're going to be here forever. We're going to be here staying. We're going to be your best supporters. We're going to be right there with you. We're excited about that. I'm excited about my new role in that. Um, but. You got appointed into that position, and we talked about the church, where we came from, where we are, where we're going. But from my heart to to this house and to you guys and to you, uh, we were talking about what I feel like I, I want mm-hmm. our church to be like. And one of those things is we've tried to develop a church that I've said it so many times, you'll probably say it moving forward, but that is so ingrained in this community that if we closed, this community would mourn because of what we do. And, and all of those ministries that we have, the pantry, Acts 29, 4S, Dining with Dignity, and all the others, we're so thankful for them because this church really is carrying out the work. Yeah, there's a lot of outreach here. And I love that because there's, I think there's too many churches that have zero outreach. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, you hear me talk about it constantly, about everything, just the unfortunate reality of uh, too many churches, just everything is contained into yeah. the building. And, you know, you look at the church when it started out in Acts, and they didn't really even have a building to meet. And a lot of people will mm-hmm. rip that out of context and think that the church and the right. church buildings aren't supposed to exist. They just didn't have it. And then they were just meeting everywhere, and they were just going out and doing things. And I, there was, yeah, That's it's just, point. it's an awesome thing that... Um, I was listening to, uh, I haven't finished the sermon, but I was listening to a little bit, and he was talking about that with just in Acts, like they didn't have, <laughs> they didn't have, uh, they didn't have the book of Acts to preach a series on, or they didn't have, you know, the book of Matthew and all this, that they were just living it out yeah. and walking it out mm-hmm. and doing what they felt led to do, what the Holy Spirit was leading them to do. And, you know, they didn't have the internet, they didn't have TikTok. Uh, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, they had none of that. And everything, the Holy Spirit just yep. still... It was a great God community. God moved around the entire planet off of just, Reached them just all. that. It was a great community. That's where it all started, in community. And that's what I hope our church continues to be, is a, a, a community. A community of believers um, together. What do you think about all those ministries? I mean, we've got the, the ones that are doing the pantry, the wheelchair ramps, the construction, the other stuff. Uh, you're going to continue all those? Yeah, I, I want to make sure, um, I, you know, I don't want to ever stop outreach stuff because it's not, to, I mean, like I said, we don't, I don't want to contain things to just mm-hmm. the building. Um, yeah, I want to make sure we're still reaching people in need. You know, I was hungry and you fed me thirsty and you gave me something to drink. And that's just, I, I've said, I think it was the first sermon that I, I preached to the youth um, about how people will see your actions before they will want to hear your mm-hmm. words. And if you're not showing the love and compassion of Jesus and not doing the works that he did uh, and just, you know, living like a Christian and, and showing people how he actually is and, and was, uh, you know, they're just going to shut you off. They're not even going to want to listen to you. And you can go out and scream till you're blue in the face at everybody that they need to find Jesus and all that. But mm-hmm. If if you can't show him to them, there there there's there's no reason for them to listen to you. I have no way of knowing this, but I think that one of the next great evolutions here for you guys is going to be uh, your passion for um, the outreach, the internet, the video, the production, all that side of it. The production ministry in this church is going to become. I'll just say it. It's going to become more and more important uh, because you've got a great vision for reaching the masses through video and through technology. Right now we're upgrading cameras. We're working on upgrading all of the systems and the cameras and the sound and everything like that because you have a great passion for getting all the gospel to all the people. Yeah, that's what I was what I was saying Sunday with, you know, back in Genesis, just cultivating the earth and subduing it and taking dominion over it and using everything 
and then Mark 16, 15, go out and, you know, mm-hmm. preach the gospel, make disciples. And there's just, there's so much technology. And now, like, even even better with as great as technology is, now there's, you can get really good stuff with not having to spend, you know, mm-hmm. a ridiculous amount of money. Now, obviously, that's like amazing stuff, and it would be great for churches to have access to that as well, uh, which is funny to me because... As soon as if I was like, hey, I want to get the same cameras uh, that MLB is using or the mm-hmm. NFL is using, people would lose their minds because <laughs> of how much that costs, uh, you know, and they'll be like, well, oh, see, the church is just all about money. Mm-hmm. But you have no problem with the right. fact that you're playing, you're, you're paying God knows how much money to watch a bunch, a bunch of men in spandex chase a leather ball around, Come on. and then they're getting paid hundreds of million dollars a year Mm -hmm. in just their contracts. That's not even counting their endorsements with, Mm -hmm. you know, like Nike and all the other places that they get. And it's just hilarious to me that we're so backwards on our priorities that Mm -hmm. we want churches to look like this broken down little house with Mm -hmm. busted out windows and everybody's walking around in burlap sacks. Not going to happen. But we have no problem paying $600 to go see a concert. And it's Mm -hmm. like, why are we so completely out of whack? Mm-hmm. With that, like, why, there's no reason why the church should not have access, and not just this church. I'm talking like every church. Yeah. I'm not just saying ours, but we should have access and the finances to, you know, use technology like that to reach. Because some people won't watch things just because it's low quality, right? And Maybe. then all the stuff that you can do with that technology and getting the message out as far and as wide as you can. Uh, you know, and not just that, but also mm-hmm. using that to, you know, using the finances to do the, the like the X29 and mm-hmm. building wheelchair ramps and, it all costs money. and, you know, providing stuff for the homeless, feeding the homeless, or, you know, imagine if you had churches that could get together and create some type of housing for homeless people. I don't know the logistics of anything like that, mm-hmm. but it's just, there's such an endless amount of things that we yeah. could be doing, but unfortunately... Uh, people care a lot more about their subscriptions than they do their salvation. And we worry a lot more about paying Netflix than we do uh, helping the church fund outreach. I feel like that's coming up in a sermon before. No, that just came to me right there. So (laughs) (laughs) That's absolutely true. Get behind it. Within the next few weeks, you're going to see the upgrades, the the quality of all these different cameras. And before anybody starts pitching a fit, um, weren't we saying that these cameras here were going to donate to a church somewhere? Yeah, they, I would love to donate these. Um, these are these are great cameras. At least ten years old or something like mm-hmm. that. And they're great um, cameras. And you know, luckily, like I was telling you, the meeting we already have a couple cameras that we're able to use, so we won't have to spend as much. Uh, and I was talking to talking to them earlier about the soundboard and how we can condense down to having just one soundboard for now. And we can use the other soundboard uh, for the youth room and the event room so they can upgrade theirs. So it's, it's not just, you know, just this getting upgraded. It's also other pieces and other things that can come together. So our live stream will sound phenomenally better. It'll look yep. phenomenally better. And, you know, they'll, the, the youth and the kids and all them in that room, they'll have their own, their nice new soundboard instead of that one had, I'm pretty sure that one's been in there since 2004. We brought that from Kings of State Road. Oh, so it's even older than that. So yeah, they are, they are playing with dirt and sticks. we're going to do it because (laughs) we're bothered by it. Yes, exactly. It bothers me. (laughs) We need to be bothered. The sermon was on being bothered. So breaking that down, we we should be bothered. That was one of my taglines that I repeated toward the end of it. We should be bothered. And then if you were here, I gave a list. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Um, I gave a list of things that we should be bothered by. We should be bothered that people are lost, hungry, hurting, uh, broken. We should be bothered that masculinity is being downplayed now. It's being called toxic. Man, you should have watched some of the faces of the people from the platform (laughs) while I was throwing some of that out. You know, people were just not expecting it. Uh, Masculinity is being labeled toxic, and in the absence of strong men, you have uh, the breakdown of relationships. Homosexuality and lesbianism becomes an option. Um, it all happens. Our ungodly culture is luring our children away from God. So instead of choosing careers that have to do with serving God and being a missionary or an evangelist or something in that ministry, we look for fame and money and power. And it's just perversion. And then we go get a master's degree in macaroni arts or whatever you can get from college. $80,000 degree. To have something that gets 
no job anywhere. <laughs> like, it's not going to work. If you don't anything. know what you want to do, go into a trade school <laughs> and learn something like that. I want us to be bothered by things. And moving forward, I, I, me to talking about where I feel like I'm going to be going and working with men, because that's one of the passions of my life is because I really do feel like men, I'm not going to be politically correct, are being <laughs> emasculated. They're being emasculated by this culture. You, we've said it in sermons. I've heard you say that they're presented as bozos, that like they don't know what they're doing. Uh, just sit over there and be quiet and let somebody else handle that. Let the wives take care of it or the ladies take care of it. And we're abdicating our position. And when the, when the man is absent from his position, the entire culture begins to unravel. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can you can go back if if you start to really look at it and go back even to like the '90s and stuff with just how dads were uh, portrayed in like TV shows and things like that. You yeah. can start to see the decline see that they were always some buffoon and some stupid moron yes. that had no idea what he was doing, and then it's just gotten worse and worse. And now you know it's. Mm -hmm. They have commercials where you don't even have dads, and it's you know they just pushed men aside, and 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 it has never worked out for a society. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's how that's the going. collapse of Rome happened, yep. because men got I'll spend all the, that the stuff next going season off. of my life funneling all of my energy into to men specifically. I'm looking forward to that. We should be bothered that alcoholism and drug abuse is is winked at, so to speak. But in the church, deliverance is shunned because it seems to be too radical to feel like you can actually pray for people and lay hands on them and believe that God would set them free. That's just too radical. When I said that, there was a shout that went up. People, I, Yeah, we've got to get back to like the, the crazy faith. Yeah. The crazy faith, to actually believing things. Like, you know, like I had said the one time, and I had heard it from uh, Mike Todd, uh, about just, you know, like, when's the last time you got a headache and prayed for it to go away and actually believe that God mm -hmm. could do something about it and make it go away instead of just immediately reaching for the ibuprofen. Come on. And we have just completely, I mean, we replace prayer with pills and, you know. Listen to that. He's just spitting it out. <laughs> We Where do you belief? get all that stuff? You got you got like alliteration thing. If I didn't know any better, I'd think you practiced that. We traded <laughs> prayers for pills. I like wordplay. I'm not that great at it, so hopefully You're I'll, I'll, be a I'll great keep at crafting it. my my craft. <laughs> See, like that crafting my craft. That's how great I am at it. No, but I mean, <laughs> we replace our our belief in God with just nothing. We have put Him on the sidelines, and you know anything else that we can try to fill it with. You know, and I'm not saying there's not a place for modern medicine, right. because obviously there is medicine that you should Don't take, you know, like vitamins right. and things like that. I'm not like one of those people like, oh, just go smash some honeysuckles and pray to Jesus and it'll it'll be great and you'll live forever. Like, no, like there are still things, but there's hope in the just, honeysuckle. We, we have like it, we literally just believe God now for like the bare mm -hmm. minimum. Crazy faith. Um, get, well, you said in a couple of, couple of weeks ago in a sermon, get ready to see things that you haven't seen before. I'm excited about that. That's what we, we should need. be bothered that too many times I said people in church are listening more for gossip than gospel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to reload that. I heard that. I think you said it more than once, too. I did. Yeah, you repeated it. I ain't playing. Because that's, yeah. Church no, that's folk, a, oh, it's am such I right? a bad, oh, yeah. Church the folk, spirit of put division. it in chat. They, they sit around gossiping and acting like they're not. And it's not, we don't play that here. We don't allow that in our church. We don't want that here. It's just a corruptive, disruptive spirit. Yeah. It's horrible. It's, it, it's, like you said, just sowing discord among mm -hmm. among the body. Uh, I, I can't stand stuff like that where, you know, yeah. I'll That's the kind have of this conversation with you and then go out in the parking lot and tell somebody else how, what I really think about you or something like that. Right. And then when I come back to you, talk about that. Like, we got to get away from that. Yeah. We've we, got to get away from that. Amen. And we are. Because I think because we have strong leadership here, we don't allow it. We don't. We confront no. it. If it happens, we go straight at you and talk to you about it and get it yeah. straightened out. Yeah, and uh, you know, like you and I, with we prefer you know face to face instead of things that are just done over a text message. Don't send me a text message uh, or just completely disappearing off the face of the earth, and they don't send you anything, and then you're wondering what, what happened. happened? <laughs> uh, that's, you know, uh, that just goes back to men not be, it's very brave. Very brave when it's they It's very do brave, that. yes. That's the word that I would use. Uh, I, was, I was seeking sarcasm. Yeah. I'm working on my alliteration now. 
Anyway, we should be bothered. <laughs> Crafting your craft. Uh, we should be bothered that the Holy Spirit is not as active in our churches as he once was and needs to be. We need the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit. So all of that uh, was just laying down a, a, my heart in a place at one time, the groundwork for you guys moving forward and how the church, the shape of it all. And, and I'm supremely confident that there are those kinds of things that you're going to have as an element of your church, but I'm also supremely confident that you guys are going to put your stamp on it. No doubt. You and Kelsey are going to put your stamp on this thing and transition it into a wonderful, powerful place that's going to make a lot of things change. And it's exciting. I, I am excited. I am excited. I'll it's, be your number one supporter. I'll be right there on the front row. I like watching it all come together. Mm -hmm. uh, well, kind of. Mm -hmm. It's fun to watch it come together, but uh, it's it also isn't fun when you're like super impatient and you're just like, hey, I want to, I want to see yeah. this yeah. come together. I don't want to slowly, but you know, well, let's see, thirty nine years, from yeah, me, well, because yeah, well, that's because God will let things come to you when they need to come to you. He will give you exactly. what you need when for the season ready. that you are in. And he will accelerate it when He wants. To. Exactly, yeah. and I you think can't that just. Acceleration is about to happen because we have a great combination of things here going on. A lot of great things that are meshing together. You're going to be, you guys are going to be so instrumental in in reaching a generation of young people your age that young, strong, able, capable, smart, intelligent, technologically advanced group. Uh, while at the same time, with, with your mom and I being here, with uh, being able to help with the the men and the women moving forward. Uh, helping all that, I think it's going to be it's going to be a great combination. It's going to make a really powerful impact. It definitely, I think there's a lot of important things in in place and coming into place, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and like that. And I was talking to uh, Mitch about it after church, and just the whole. I really feel like there is moose a uh, <laughs> a, a revival coming, mm -hmm. just a and even like on a global scale. I don't think it's just limited to. Mm -hmm one small area. Mm -hmm. I think there is something coming. Um, and like we've talked about, Mark Driscoll's talked about, like the line has been drawn mm -hmm. and there is, is like no more lukewarm anymore. It's either you're, you're hot and you're getting hotter or you're cold and you're getting colder. Yeah. And there's people that. just incredibly hungry for truth, just mm -hmm. insanely hungry for truth. And you think like the last several years, that we have just been fed so many lies mm -hmm. and, you know, the media and television and social media, just everything, news, journalism, like they just, there's so many lies that yeah. get fed and people are fed up with it. And Come we on. just are hungry with the truth for the truth. And I think that's a big part of why we're seeing that shift where there's, um, I can't, I'm trying to remember how it was put, but it was just, there's a whole lot more, interest in Jesus mm -hmm. and Christianity. There's a lot more interest, but on the other side of it, there's that just complete distaste for it where it's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. people are genuinely searching and pushing into it. And those people, when they come out of the world, when they come out of like somebody, <coughs> excuse me, like Kat Von D or people that were completely in the dark, they have such a, a powerful uh, not just testimony, but just such a, a powerful and strong faith because they were so ingrained in the darkness that when they truly convert to Jesus and they truly get rooted in their faith and figure out that that is the truth and they've been lied to, you, they, you, they're like unshakable, they're unbreakable because they have, they're, they're putting everything they can have into it because... They've just, they realize mm -hmm. what the other side of the coin was. And I think that's probably the problem with uh, a lot of people who've just kind of grown up in faith, grown up in church, and they just kind of piggybacked off of their parents' faith or their mm -hmm. grandparents, mm -hmm. and they're just kind of going through the motion, like, yeah, I believe God, and I love God, but we're just kind of like, eh, we're just mm -hmm. sort of doing it. We're not really committed, no and it's just it. a little bit there. And it's like, y'all don't understand mm -hmm. exactly how terrible the other side is, mm -hmm. and it's not that you need to experience it, but maybe some some people need to experience, not necessarily like falling away and going into sin, but just the reality of it. And I think we're seeing for years now with the lies and just how blatant, blatantly on display Satan is mm -hmm. and that he's just 
not caring to hide anything in the dark anymore. Everything is now in the light and it's in your face. So it's, it's more detestable mm -hmm. and it's also getting more acceptable for the, <laughs> for True. the sides. I mean, it's just, you're getting the people like, even if they weren't a Christian or they're not a Christian, they're still like, this is bad. This is wrong. Like mm -hmm. this should not be right. And that's already like planting the seed to mm -hmm. steer them towards, you know, towards finding the faith, I think. And I think we're just mm -hmm. headed on that path of there's about to be a big global revival. And which is also scary to think of because the Bible says when, you know, in Revelation, when Jesus comes back, there's a giant falling away. So mm -hmm. I can't imagine how bad that looks, but I don't think that's where we are. What that's going to look like. Last thing that I brought up was something that I wanted to come back to for the family room for tonight, because I think it's important moving forward. It was, and it was actually a little something that I'll, in full disclosure, you shared it with me from, I think, Pastor Stephen Furtick, uh, from Matthew chapter 15, the disciples, the crowd, mm -hmm. the people. Uh, I shared that story. Jesus called the disciples and told them, I feel sorry for these people. And the disciples said, where will we get enough money, food here to feed this such a great crowd? And I pointed that out that Jesus saw people, the disciples saw crowds. And I mentioned that in church on Sunday, that moving forward, I want us to make sure that no matter how big, the, how big is your church, not big enough. But as our church grows, I want to make sure that we, it's not about the crowds, but it's about the people. No matter if the th crowd is 2,000, 3,000, it doesn't matter. Those are 2,000, 3,000 people. I had a, one of our strongest supporters came to me afterwards in tears. And she said, I'm so glad you said that. She said, because I've, we've been here now for the last eight or nine years, and we've watched the church go through COVID and bounce back and now can, starting to grow. And then with Jared coming in, this emphasis on reaching lost people and growing and buying land and building a bigger building. And, and she said, I was starting to get afraid that it was going to be just all about the crowds and it was just going to be about how big we could get. And she said, I was so glad that you said that it's all about people. And it really is. Um, it's all about the people. You know? But you know what people are? People... They're people that need Jesus, and, and if you're winning the lost and the church starts to grow, everybody in that church should be shouting and dancing and making room and giving so that we can build bigger. It, that's what it's all about. We shouldn't go, ah, oh, there's too many people there. I'm going to go someplace else. Anything that is alive grows, and if it's growing, remember that. No matter how big it gets or how big we get, uh, it's about people, that's individual what people. That's what amazes me about uh, like the people <laughs> that really hate mega churches, and I get yeah, there's they've got their problems. some as uh, well some aspects. There's problems everywhere, right? And somebody made a comment recently um, about like the church and how you know the church is it's just, it's wrong and it's against everything the Bible teaches. Like, the church is not the problem. The problem is people because oh. we are all broken. We all have our own issues. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got their own stuff, and. Yeah, all, all that's going to go away one day, but right now it's not. So it's just something that we live with. You know, like I've said a million times, sanctification is that lifelong process. But it's almost like everybody just expects everything in the church to be immediately perfect. perfect. And so, yes, while there are certainly issues in mega churches, mm -hmm. and I think the problem, too, with that is they're a lot more easier to see because they have a they're lot so more public. attention and they're more public. But everybody's always against them most of the time just because they're big. Mm -hmm. And and like you just said, like, if it's not alive, it's not going to grow. Like mm -hmm. the, like we talked about earlier with Acts, it was over 3,000 people in one day. Boom. And it was just thousands and thousands. I mean, it spread across mm -hmm. the world in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And then we get upset if a church has more than 100 people. Right. And all of a sudden, we're like, whoa, whoa, that's not yeah, it. They're all about this. And it's like, no, it's... It's not about the crowds, but it is about mm -hmm. the crowds. It is about the people because we should be trying to reach crowd. as many people as we can. Mm -hmm. I mean, Satan's filling up arenas for people right. to worship whatever their favorite music artist is. Why can't we fill churches up of the same capacity to worship the only one who is actually truly worthy mm -hmm. to be worshipped, the only one who deserves our worship? And that's what's just, it's like mind-boggling to me that, it, it is just, we've reached that place where it's more acceptable to mm -hmm. praise Jay-Z than it is to praise Jesus. 
Jim, he's doing it again. I did that one on purpose. I had to, <laughs> I had to, I had to get one more in. <laughs> no, but that's just like that's my heart. Like the church should I be. Agree. You should never be able to contain the amount of people that you are reaching within your walls. That's why mm-hmm. technology and uh, like the streaming and everything. Mm-hmm. That's why it's, it's so such important. a blessing because if you can't make it, we blast right. it out online numerous times throughout the week. And then there's you know the archive. There's the the sermons on YouTube. Everything and it's just we reach there's thousands there's no limit to how much you can get fed. Like it shouldn't just be Sunday and we shouldn't just be contained to the building and we should be growing and building numerous buildings to house all the people. So we could all come together on a Sunday or if not, you know, like, Hey, you can do it in your living room if you can't join us. Or if you live in a completely different state or across the world, you can join that church and worship with them on a Sunday or whatever day, like right now on a Wednesday, you can just join that, and mm-hmm. and you know it's the church. Churches should be big; mm-hmm. they should be big. Just because we simply should be reaching people, and a lot of people they'll complain if you're reaching a bunch that oh you know you're a mile wide and an inch thick. Okay, well you know we're only supposed to catch the fish. Jesus is the one that cleans them up in the end. Mm-hmm. So all we need to do is be getting people in and then planting seeds in do their lives. Part. And let him do the work that he's the one that we're, that's supposed to be doing the work. Do the work. Do the work. So that's where we are. It's pretty exciting. That was the sermon for the week. So we hope that you guys are able to comment down there. Let us know what you thought about it, how it went, and what you're looking forward it to. It was great. Sunday is coming. Sunday's coming. Um, so, yeah, we, uh, we'll see you. Th- do you have anything else you want to add? I got it. You got it. We will. Well, if you want to get ahead of it, wait for it. That's and with that, on. no, we'll just leave it on that. Wait for it. That's Sunday, wait on. for it. Wait for it. Just wait We'll for see it. you then, but 10 a.m. Don't miss it. Be in the house. Be come here. early. Be part of it. Come, come early. early. Always, come early. We'll yeah. see you then. Good night. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.